Today, I want to reveal my business logo and the name of my business. So this video will be a logo and a name reveal. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Chastity King and I am the author of the soon to be published book, The King's Daughter, which is an autobiography of my life, of course, hence autobiography, and it takes you through the intimate details of the addiction that I overcame, my recovery, and my faith. So, let me tell you a little bit about the name of my business and why I chose the name and how I received the name. One night, I was up researching. It was on a Saturday night before church, and I was researching the self-publishing process and watching multiple YouTube videos about how to do this and all the things that come with it. A few videos that I watched mentioned starting your own business in order to start publishing your book or your publishing multiple books. All the videos I had watched up until that point never said anything about starting an LLC or a publishing company. When I heard this and I watched this video, I was like, um, hold up, I've got to create a publishing company. I, I dug more into it and did a little bit more research and found that actually a lot of authors do that. They want an imprint name to publish under and therefore they create their own publishing company so that they can have a name to publish under. This looks a lot more professional than just having that your book was published by you. What an imprint is, and I've talked about this in another video, the imprint is the logo that is on the bottom of the spine, which is this. Like this says Charisma House. So that's the imprint name, that's the publishing company. When I realized that I really needed to make a publishing company and create my own imprint name so that I can publish under it, my mind went crazy and I just started thinking about all the different names that I could come up with. I thought about, okay, I need something that's going to be significant. I need something that's going to have meaning to it. And so then I looked up other examples of names of what other people use for publishing companies. And what I found was that people either used press, house, or books, or just some name that didn't have any of those. But for the most part, people chose those three to have on the end of their names. So for instance, the one I just showed you says Charisma House. Um, other places have like, say for instance, Grace Press or Arrow Books, which is actually something that I tried to look into. So the first thing that I knew I was going to have to see about was if the names that I wanted or that I was considering and debating were even available. And I checked with the Secretary of State and typed it in and the main ones that I was interested in were something that was related to diamonds or arrows because diamonds and arrows are very significant to me. And so I thought about Diamond House or Diamond Press or Diamond Books, Arrow Books, Arrow House, all of that. And so when I checked on some of those things, some of them were already taken. And so I was like, that's a bummer. And then I got on this little rant of like, okay, well, how do I know to choose from press or house or books? What's the difference? And is there even a difference? And so as I began to research more and I thought about it more, I said, well, well, I really don't want to have books on the end of it because then that would just limit my company to like books. I wanted my company to do more than just publish my own books. I'm, I mean, I do want to help other people publish their books one day, but there's going to be other stuff that I'm going to do. I'm going to like create a parallel and do heat press and stuff like that. So I didn't want it to be solely just books. As I continued to debate either press or house all night, and I got so excited, I stayed up to 4 a.m., y'all. 4 a.m., I stayed up all night, and I had church the next morning. By the time I went to bed, I still did not have a name in mind. I woke up at 8.30 to a message from a girl named Hannah, who I pick up for church every Sunday, asking me to text her whenever I'm on the way. 
Mind you, when I went to bed at 4 a.m., I was running in my head of how I was going to tell my pastor that I was going to be bailing out of church, and I didn't get any sleep the night before, and yada, yada, yada. Whenever I woke up to that message, I was like, oh, I can't bail on her. Like, she's pulling on me. She's expecting me to show up. She's already up. She's ready. She's waiting on me to come. So I hurried up, I threw a toboggan on, threw some clothes on, picked her up, and then on the way to church, we're conversing back and forth about this new business and this new uh, idea about <clears throat> different names, and I was asking her to help me, and she come up with some stuff, but nothing was really just like clicking and like, oh, that's it. As I kept driving down the road closer to the church, I began to hear a name. As I'm communing with the Lord, I'm like, all right, Lord, it's got to have meaning. It's got to have significance. And if it can't be diamonds and if it can't be arrows, then what is it? And then I heard gratitude press. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, gratitude. Because gratitude is like what I'm known for. Gratitude and joy. I have a colleague who tells me I'm the gratitude queen. That's what she refers to me as sometimes, the gratitude queen. Even in my last place of employment, I had this little notebook and I wrote, what are you grateful for today? And I initially wrote that. So when customers would sign their receipts, cause it was a restaurant and we did takeout and stuff. And when I was at the cash register and they would pay with a credit card, they would have to put the receipt on the counter and sign their name. Well, the problem was is when that paper hit that counter, that pen didn't want to write too well. But if you put a notebook underneath it, it would write just fine. So we put a notebook underneath there. And so I had the idea I would write, what are you grateful for today? So when people went to go sign their receipt and seen that, they would think to themselves what they actually are grateful for today. But what ended up happening that I didn't expect was that customers actually started writing on it what they were grateful for and I thought that was so cool and then before you know it people were asking me what I was grateful for and here we are today I haven't worked there in almost two years and they still have that notebook there and they write in it every day what are you grateful for today and customers are still writing on it so needless to say I am all about some gratitude and so when I heard that name gratitude press I was like yes yes press that word press made sense to me because I wanted to do heat press as well. So I thought that it was perfect that not only would that name represent the press part, represent, you know, uh, publishing services, but it would also represent the apparel that I want to heat press and put my designs on and do sublimation printing and et cetera, et cetera. I just kept hearing that in my spirit as we were on the way to church. I looked at Hannah and I told her, Gratitude Press. I said, I think that's I think that's it. So then we get to church and we start to worship and I'm up on the platform. Destiny doesn't really sing a certain song. She just starts kind of like singing out of her spirit. After we get into it for a little bit, she starts singing one word over and over and over and over. And that word was press. And we just kept saying press press, press. And as we were singing that and worshiping, I was just hit, like the Holy Spirit was like loud and clear. Yes, press. I'm giving you a press. I'm giving you a press because you have pressed into me. And I was like, yes, yes, press. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. And so after we began worshiping, and uh, we went back to our seats to hear the preaching. Miss Lynette, my pastor's wife, actually was preaching that day. As she's preaching, I'm hearing Holy Spirit speak to me about this new business. And he's like downloading a word. And I'm on my phone and I'm typing it out, what I'm hearing from the Lord. This is the word that the Lord gave me. A little while longer, you will see. And in that day, you will know that I am. These things I have spoken to you while I am present with you. You have shown gratitude in more ways than most. Therefore, I will show you my glory in more ways than you have ever known. I am giving you a press because you have pressed into me. It shall be gratitude press. It is time. Time to make a difference. 
Your next is now. Prepare yourself. Expect and anticipate. Exciting. And then at the end of service, we take up the offering and pastor was not there, but he did a video and he said this one thing. What's God telling you to do? Start a business? We'll do it. And when he said that, I was like, Okay, God, all of this is confirmation. That is how I came up with the name Gratitude Press. I truly believe that it was a name from the Lord. The logo that I have designed is very significant, and I will put it up on the screen so you can see. But if you look, there is, it's a diamond, obviously. And like I said, diamonds are so significant to me, and so are arrows. And when I originally made this logo, I had the diamond and I had like the rays coming out of it and it's got like some rainbow splotches in the background because I just, I love colors and I didn't have the arrows yet and I didn't even think about putting the arrows until my coworker Jessica, when I was showing her the logo, she was like, that's, that's good, Fran, that's good. Why don't you put some arrows in it? And so then I was like, that's a perfect idea. And so I did the cross arrows and it fit perfectly on the design. Although I couldn't have the name diamonds or arrow in the business name, I'm able to have it in the logo. And then I have gratitude in the name. So honestly, it's like an all-in-one package because I have the diamonds and then I have the arrows and then I also have the gratitude piece. And all of those things are just, ah! Just to give you a little bitty uh, brief cap of why diamonds and arrows are significant is because diamonds represent the soul. And for me, the Lord spoke very clearly to me one day when I was fresh off of drugs. I had about 11 days free from using drugs. I had the temptation to go back to my husband who was a drug dealer and he sent me some pictures of my drug of choice which was liquid morphine and then some morphine pills and then another picture of a diamond necklace. It was actually the shape of a Superman which is the shape of a diamond. When he sent those to me, I could, I could literally taste the morphine. I could feel it going through my body and I wanted so bad to use. As I kept staring at those pictures, the Lord spoke to me and said, choose the diamond choose wisely, choose to be transformed. You're underneath an extreme pressure and heat right now to use, but choose to be transformed. That's how diamonds are actually formed. Diamonds, before they're diamonds, they're just carbon. It takes an extreme amount of heat and pressure down in the earth for a diamond to even be formed. And then it's still so deep into the earth's mantle that man cannot reach the diamonds to be able to mine them. They have to be brought up to the surface somehow. And that usually happens by like a volcanic eruption. They're so deep down into the surface that man cannot reach them. That's how my soul was. My soul was just in complete darkness. And even when I was transformed into a diamond, and even when a volcanic eruption happened in my soul, and I was brought up to the surface and out of the darkness and into his marvelous light, like my soul still had to be cut and shaped and polished, just like a diamond. Because even when the diamonds are mined, like before you see it all pretty on somebody's hand, uh, they had to go through a process before they were ever like that. So that's how our soul is. That's why diamonds are so significant to me. The arrows are significant to me because whenever I was using drugs and I was really having a lot of confusion, hearing voices, hearing demons speaking to my ear, but also hearing the voice of God and not knowing how to discern either one, I would see things that I just knew had a deeper meaning than what m met your eye. I would see a bow and arrow, and I just knew that it meant something. Later in life, they became, <clears throat> the arrows just became more meaningful to me because then I would see them in scripture. The arrow represents uh, the arrow of the Lord. It represents an arrow of deliverance. And when you think about an arrow, when you pull it back, you're aiming for something and it's whatever it hits, it's target, it's going to pierce it. The arrows for me represents piercing people's hearts, whether that's through my writing with my book, especially, or whether that's through me speaking. It's the arrow of the Lord and it's the word of God.
the arrows and the diamonds are really significant. That's why I chose them for my logo. That's why I incorporated all of that together. And then, of course, the gratitude press because I am known for gratitude. And so speaking of gratitude, you better know what I'm going to ask you next. And that is, what are you grateful for today? Today, I'm grateful for consistency. And consistency to me means doing the things that you don't want to do on a regular basis. That's what consistency is. It's just showing up. And I'm grateful that I have the ability today to show up and do the things that I'm committed to. It's sticking it out. It's, com it's starting something and then completing it. It's, it's staying committed. So I'm grateful that I have the ability to be consistent today. So be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll get notifications every time that I post a video. And again, I'm going to say subscribe because remember guys, I have to reach my goal of 100 subscribers by the end of the year. That's all for today.